Okay, so now this is the floor to, to our two uh, last uh, speakers of the day. Uh, I name uh, André Charles Minsa and uh, Eric Leoutre. So, are you? I think you are here, no? Yes. Uh, maybe we can unmute you. Hello, <coughs> hello, Xavier. Hello, everybody. This is Eric. Hello, Eric and uh, André Charles. Um, so. This, this last site visit is, is dedicated to, uh, to an application of uh, the MIP project, so the, the project uh, in the frame of, of, of this uh, uh, geothermal winter school. So um, I will present uh, both of the main actors of this uh, application on the, which is willing to, to um, transfer uh, energy from uh, existing or abundant uh, oil fields. So uh, we have here with us André Charles, who, who, uh, who is graduated from solar energy research in 2011. Hello. And, and joined the uh, Energia company, uh, startup company in, in August uh, 2013 as a project manager to manage uh, uh, projects such as uh, energy efficiency um, and uh, also uh, installation of ORC on solar collector in Brazil, Greece, uh, and France. And he, he was involved as a project uh, manager in another, uh, also uh, another A2020 uh, EU project named Innova Microsolar. And um, as a collaborator of Enogia, now uh, he's, he's also a member of the MIP project, of course. And um, we have also with us Eric Leoutre, uh, who is a um, production uh, engineer at Vermillon Energy. Um, so he's a petroleum engineer with more than 15 years experience in the oil and gas business. And he spent nine years uh, with Shell in the reservoir engineering uh, in, in UK and, and uh, Malaysia. And he joined Vermillion in uh, 2011 uh, with diverse projects and team responsibilities in France. He has now moved to uh, production engineering um so eric told me uh, once that he's a is a firm believer of uh, cross fertilization of uh, uh, between oil and geothermal industry so he's a is our uh, best uh, our best lawyer uh <laughs> toward the, the oil company i hope uh, i'm not the only one in the oil industry <laughs> no 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 no. <laughs> but you are inside actually so it's uh, it's very good uh, so you graduated from uh, Ecole Nationale Supérieure de Géologie uh, in Nancy and uh, got a master uh, from IFP uh, and Texas A&M University. So also you are also full member of uh, the MIT project managing the work package four, but I, I will let you actually uh, during the launch of the, uh, not now, but uh, during the video, uh, you will, you have a presentation so and and after that you can uh, you can take the floor and uh, answer questions from from people um, and i think now i can uh, can go to the video which okay share it Okay. Hope you're seeing my screen. Okay. Um, tell me. Everything is fine. You see the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Go launch it. Okay, so let's go for this virtual site visit of the, the pilot uh, organic ranking cycle that is developed by uh, an Energia uh, company and installed on the Chonois oil field uh, of uh, Vermillon Energy uh, and uh, this last 40 minutes around. See you after that.
Hello Eric. You are one of the industrial partners uh, of the Mid Project with your company Vermillon Energy. Could you shortly tell uh, the EGPD and the uh, Geothermal Winter School participants what is your uh, role in the project? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Xavier. Thanks for having uh, me and uh, having Vermillon in the in the in the show. My name is Eric Eout. I'm a reservoir engineer by background, and I'm, I'm doing uh, you know production optimization with geothermal projects uh, in Vermillon at the moment. Um, well, basically, um, the, the role of, of Vermillon is, uh, is uh, uh, threefold. Uh, on the, the global theme is that we are trying to, uh, um, uh, you know, to find synergies between petroleum production and geothermal energy with um, three themes. The first one is data. Uh, there's plenty of petroleum data that can be used in sedimentary basins to help understand the geothermal potential of, uh, of, uh, of, of basins. So this is the first one, data. The second one is um, co-production. By co-production, we mean using the uh, huge amounts of um, hot water that comes together with the oil production. Uh, so instead of uh, wasting this heat, we try to valorize it uh, locally around our, uh, our sites. So second is co-production. And third, third is conversion. Uh, you, know, you know, thanks to um, data and thanks to experience of co-production, we think we can better understand and better study the potential conversion of uh, oil to geothermal at the end of uh, the petroleum field, the petroleum life of, uh, of a field. Could you please uh, contextualize how did you decide to uh, locate the demonstration sites on this Chonoa exploitation site with data and uh, possibly some uh, identification uh, scheme? Um, yes, Xavier. So the question is, where um, should we uh, install this pilot uh, to, 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 to find the best, uh, the best solution? So it starts with, um, you know, the portfolio that we have. And this, this uh, chart, this plot shows the uh, wellhead temperature versus the water rates of uh, all our, our wells in, uh, in France. There's about 330 points on that chart, and each, each of them represents uh, an oil producer. Altogether, um, they produce, and we produce about 40,000 meters cubed a day of hot water, hot brine, uh, in France. Bearing in mind that this is, on average, uh, you know, 95% is water and 5% is oil. So we are actually more of a. I like to say that we are actually more of a water producer than an oil producer. And on this chart, you see that, um, you know, we the, the well, uh, you know, the well um, um, rates and temperature varies uh, greatly. Um, of course, all of that depends on the geology, the subsurface parameter, the depth, and all of that. But basically, we can produce as high as uh, 97 degrees C. And in terms of rates, it, it varies from 100 meters cubed a day to almost 1,000 meters cubed a day. So, you know, a, a large number of, of wells to choose from. So how do we uh, do, actually? Well, uh, I also want to highlight that with a lot of mapping, uh, here is an example of the of a, of a map of the site where we try to display uh, the well um, capacity in terms of rate and temperature. So this is uh, something that's quite new for, for us and I think for any petroleum, uh, petroleum uh, producer to care about its, uh, its production and geothermal potential. So this uh, mapping exercise also helps us to, to find out what the best locations are for our pilots. Now, um, there's a number of, of uh, parameters that we've been uh, looking at. Uh, I guess there, there are three, in my view, there are three main parameters. The, the first thing is that we want to uh, maximize the thermodynamic efficiency, i.e. the conversion between thermal energy on electric or power on the power or, or electric uh, energy. So for that, you, you know, you need to have high temperature and high rate that ensures you with the highest um, efficiency. That is the first parameter. We want to be on the, on the, on the you know, top right side of this graph, if you like, higher temperature, higher rates. The second thing is we want to, uh, and this is, you know, in, on that on that slide, this is the, the bottom right uh, graph that you have. This is a zoom of the highest uh, temperature range. Um, there's about 70 producers that are that have uh, well head temperature higher than 70 degrees C. But still, within that within that uh, that that uh, sub sub uh, subgroup of, of wells, you know, there's still you know many options. So what should that Second parameter then we looked at is uh, okay if we do a pilot we want to make sure that we can uh, scale it up uh, so there's no point uh, you know trying uh, the technology on the worst case and on the worst case uh, set of parameter or on the best set of parameters we want something that's 
representative that we can uh, scale up in other places. On the third parameter was that we wanted to be in line with uh, the uh, specification of Energia's ORC units. So all of that together, and this is the next um, the next slide, uh, you see this, uh, this same portfolio of, uh, of wells with um, the uh, option that we have chosen for, for pilots. You see we cover a wide range of rates, you know, uh, high rates, lower rates, on the some range of uh, temperature, high temperature, on lower temperature, on all of that uh, can be achieved with, with the uh, 20 kilowatt um, ORC turbine. Hello, André Charles. Hello, Xavier. Um, you are also part of the MIT project uh, as an industrial partner with uh, Energia. So what are your tasks uh, in this project and, and what did you design uh, in terms of your demonstration site? Okay. Uh, yes, we are part of MIT project on the wall package sheet. Energia is a small uh, company. Um, we are designing and, and producing organic quantum cycle. It's a, a kind of machine can um, convert heat to electricity. And uh, a part of uh, our uh, work in, uh, in MIT project is to demonstrate uh, the feasibility of uh, electric production in a geo in various geothermal context. Uh, we have to uh, design and adapt a free uh, machine for six uh, demonstration sites. We have six demonstration sites, uh, two sedimentary in Chaunois, uh, in Caso, in France, uh, two volcanic sites uh, in Iceland, Greenstein and Kroima, and also uh, two in granitic geological context in Sous Forest. Uh, in Strasbourg and um, in Turkey. A part of our work is to evaluate the right material regarding the corrosion issue uh, using the geological uh, fluids, but also adapt uh, our uh, standard organic ranking cycle for geological uh, installation for plants. Uh, uh, a part of our work uh, is also to uh, make a mobile unit in order to transfer easily uh, the, um, the machine from one demo site to another. That's it. Uh, I don't know if you are uh, comfortable of the concept of organic ranking cycle. Xavier? Maybe you, you could explain uh, okay. a little bit about that. Okay, uh, the organic cranking cycle is a thermodynamical cycle uh, based on the Carnot cycle. On this cycle, we have a turbine, we have a heat exchanger, a pump, and also an over heat exchanger. The first heat exchanger we have here is the evaporator. Uh, this evaporator is connected to a uh, hot source, hot water sometimes, but in our uh, project it's a geological fluid. And the um, innovation uh, in, this, uh, in this part of work is we are producing electricity with a low flow and low temperature. That means in the inlet we can have this to this. It's really low uh, regarding geological uh, geothermal context. And the, the flow rate can be uh, Liter per second to centiliter per second. What we have here 
we have hot water, and the hot water will transfer heat. We transfer heat to our uh, refrigerant fluid. Here we have a liquid uh, working fluid. We go to the pump, and the pump will pressurize the fluid. We will have high pressure on this side. We have high pressure on this side, and the fluid will go through the evaporator and will be vaporized. In this part, we will have vapor. We have vapor at high pressure. After that, we will go through the turbine when, uh, where the fluid will be expanded. Uh, the, this expansion of the, of the fluid will um, make a wheel turn. The wheel is uh, connected to the shaft in turn, and we have a generator here, and this generator will produce electricity. After that, we will have a vapor at low pressure. This vapor will go through the condenser, and the condenser will condense the fluid, and we will have liquid at low pressure. This condenser is also a net exchanger. Connected to the cold loop, depending on what we are, but we can have also 5 to 25 degrees here. And the flow depends on the power thermal we need to evacuate. This is the concept of the ORC, this is the concept of what we have. And the main part of innovation in MIG project is find the right material for the evaporator in order to have um, something can fit with the corrosion issue regarding the geothermal fluid. What is the difference between mm, uh, normal, I would say, electricity production at high temperature and your process. What is the difference uh, between these two kinds of uh, ORC? But the difference is uh, it's really uh, focused on the turbine because we design a turbine for a small range of thermal power and flow but in the conventional geothermal power plant, we have higher temperature and higher power and bigger machine. And we focus on this one. We develop a micro turbine with a high speed, with a really good efficiency. And the difference between the conventional ORC in geothermal and this one is the flow the thermal power and the efficiency at this low flow. Uh, can you explain us um, how did you conduct the testing phase uh, in the different steps for, uh, for this testing process? Okay, uh, cool. Uh, we have um, two main tests uh, for the organic funding cycle. The factory test. Uh, the factory test consists to uh, be sure that what we produce and design work in the uh, same condition uh, of the final site. Uh, that means that we have a test bench uh, with the um, same temperature and flow regarding the, the um, hot water, the hot source. And we made some tests in order to optimize the production. Uh, we do some safety uh, 
uh, safety procedure to be sure that if something happens, the ORC will be able to um, turn down uh, safely. And um, the other part of the test is when these factory tests are validated with the client or with this partner, uh, we go on site and uh, we plug everything uh, to the client site or demo site. And after that, we make some uh, optimization work regarding the, um, the hot water, the production, the safety, because uh, we can be uh, in the same condition uh, in our facility or in our demo site, but we get some real constraint on the demo site. It's be some time uh, the, on the site, we get some more constraint, we got some uh, problem regarding the communication uh, with the data that we will send to all the client or everything. Everything needs to be uh, good at the end of our commissioning phases. It's what we, we do for, for the test. Hello Sylvain, Hello. Um, can you briefly introduce uh, what are the facilities on this production site and uh, where specifically uh, is installed uh, the, the ORC unit prototype? Yes, okay. So we are here on a production cluster, we are about two kilometers from the battery. producing about 5 to 40 cubes per day of fluid. This fluid is 98 degrees C. This fluid is 90 degrees C. Transportation of this fluid from the wellhead to the ORC pipes where we can see the connection between our permanent production pipe and the flexible connected to this ORC uh, module. So we have located this ORC uh, tank a little bit far from the wellhead because we are close to the pipeline, production pipeline, and also because we are closer to the This is the wellhead of the well of Chaudois 40. At the two kilometers deep, there is the ESP, so uh, the electrical submersible pump, 
and then the fluid is coming to the surface, to us, through a tubing. This will help, the end of the tubing will arrive here, and the production will go through this pipe. This pipe is at 90-93 degrees C, so I can touch it, but it's warm, but it's very hot. We can monitor the pressure of the wellhead, which is about 15 by 1.5 bar. of the well. We have also a cellar here which is about two meters deep where there is all the flange of the wellhead, tubing hanger, casing hanger, etc. We can also see here uh, the cable, electrical cable, that is providing the electricity to the motor of the pump two kilometers deep. Uh, we can see also maybe here two security, high pressure and low pressure. If the pressure is too high, the security will stop the well. If the pressure is too low, which could be a leak at our production pipe, the pump will be shut. Hello, André Charles. How did you design your prototype? Uh, taking into account the constraints from uh, your uh, industrial, industrial partner, Vermeo Energy. Uh, thank you for this question. That's a very really interesting question. Uh, usually, we do uh, work on our own. Uh, now, we start with um, geothermal fluid. Gas uh, with our component. We design a different functional uh, Why uh, it is innovative for us? Because it's not our product. We design uh, this uh, ORC unit to fit with corrosion issue or the geothermal uh, fluid corrosion issue. Titanium uh, plate because we know that titanium fits with everything. But uh, with this uh, OAC unit, we learn the behavior of the uh, heat exchanger. Uh, behavior of heat exchanger and the performance of organic cranking cycle. Uh, as you can see, Fresh cold water, it's why we install a dry cooler, and this dry cooler we cool down the condenser. And uh, at the end, we will produce uh, electricity. The ORC unit you saw behind me is uh, 20 kilowatts, and when the weather is bad, we produce more. Then when the weather is bad, Temperature, the performance of the well is increased every year around 10, 10 kilowatts. And uh, what do you produce here? We are producing uh, electricity, only electricity, but we are producing also data because uh, of our research. Uh, regarding the corrosion uh, and regarding the, um, uh, the performance of the ORC. And uh, you spoke about corrosion, but At this time, we don't know. 
because we need to make some analysis regarding the, the plate, but we are uh, have two uh, pressure sensors uh, at the inlet of the heat exchanger and also at the outlet in order to measure the pressure drop. And uh, what we saw during uh, our um, test it's the increasing of the pressure drop during the test. That means, yes, we have some deposit uh, on, 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 the, on the plate. Regarding the performance, we uh, make some evaluation with Vermian uh, regarding the um, wells panel they got, and with the right temperature and the right pressure rate, um, we design. want to learn uh, what is the best material uh, regarding the economy and regarding the performance and we make a small uh, rack of simple material to see the behavior of different material. Uh, for example, we use titanium, stainless steel, um, uh, carbon steel and uh, at this time we made some analysis with our partner in the project ECI in Iceland. Nominal point, uh, we got around uh, 86 uh, degrees uh, at the outlet of the evaporator. Now explain us uh, how did you prepare the solutioning of the and uh, how did this go uh, for the installation? Safety. It's why on the on the on the wells we have three valves to bypass the organic ranking cycle. And if the organic ranking cycle cannot work, we also can be able to produce uh, oil. The second uh, part is regarding the electricity. Doing that, we need some uh, authorization of Inedis, and we need also to make some uh, procedure, uh, safety procedure. 
procedure. That means if uh, something happens in the um, in the network, electrical network, uh, the OSDA must be able to uh, turn off automatically and uh, not feed. made uh, with the help of the Vermeer and the uh, Iledis, and everything goes right. André Charles, can you tell us what the ORC needed? thermal power to the working fluid. and to uh, make it happen the condensation that I will show you after. How the outlet of the evaporator on the working fluid will go uh, inside the turbine. This is the turbine. Uh, in the turbine we have two ports, the fluidic port and the electrical port. In the fluidic port, Vapor, but at low pressure, and we will go to the condenser, and the working fluid will condensate on the this heat exchanger, and in the outlet of this heat exchanger, we have tank fluid receiver, and we will be uh, on the liquid phases. After that, we will go to the pump, and the working fluid will pressurize, and we will go through the evaporator again, and the loop is closed. Uh, about the expander, we get the generator. The generator is connected to an inverter in order to uh, synchronize the network and also to feed the electrical network. PLC for the control and regulation. And this uh, PLC is connected to a computer when we have the supervision in order to see what happened uh, in the ORC. We get many sensors, uh, temperature sensors, pressure sensors. to see uh, the cycle and also to know the production in real time.
side we are in the process of that energy. That means that the oil sea producer will be consumed inside the cluster. Will not sell the electricity uh, network, but uh, the government will be efficient in the cluster by reducing the global consumption. This is the user interface. It's um, the HMI um, interface uh, where the user can see what's um, happened with the organic ranking cycle. Uh, here you can see the power production, the um, instantaneous power production, and here the prod you get the energy. It's the energy that we produce um, at the beginning of a, of, a, of a test. Here you have the turbo expander, you get the evaporator, the condenser, and the feed pump. You can see also the dry cooler for the cooling loop, the cold loop pump, and also the facility for cooling. Uh, for cool down the generator. That's it. You can have many information on this interface. You can have the temperature inlet and outlet the evaporator on the bright side. Uh, you get also the difference between the inlet and outlet and also the pressure drop on the evaporator. You will also have the inlet temperature on the working fluid going through the evaporator, the outlet temperature and the pressure. You will have also in the detail um, interface the overheat, the pressure, the high pressure. You will have a pressure ratio and the low pressure and the temperature outlet the evaporator. You will get also the, the expander speed and some information regarding the, the behavior of the expander. This is, the, this is the, um, a dry cooler for cooling down the generator and the cooling pump. After that, we can have the temperature inlet the condenser and outlet the condenser the speed fan of a dry cooler. All is information is available uh, if you are connected uh, through the Ethernet connection with uh, Organic Ranking Cycle PLC. You will also have the um, fault panel, uh, the ORC side fault and the client side fault. On the ORC side fault, you will have the lubrication error, the pump inverter error, the temperature, the cavitation, and the um, grid error. On the client, you will have um, an error if a, a source is too low, if a cold source is too high, or if we get a, um, a grid connection error. Also, uh, if your user turn down the, the ORC. In this panel, you will have uh, the remote or local control of the ORC, uh, the start and startup, the status of the ORC, and uh, you can drive um, between different pages uh, of um, ORC, you can go to the alarm, to the maintenance, it's for the um, supervisor connection, and uh, these pages. This is what we get, and, and during all the process, you, go, you can go through the same interface in order to um, take all the information in um, CSV. Uh, file 
uh, the system will create a CSV file for each day when the ORC is running. Uh, this is, was the representation of the uh, actual installation in, in Chonois. That's it. Okay, okay. Uh, so it's, it's over. Sorry, very sorry for the wind. It was really bad really really bad but all the rest was was uh, great <laughs> thank you for to eric and the on the shout for uh, for their um uh, their active co uh, cooperation on, on this to let us visit their their uh, their site and to explain us in detail their the orc um pilots uh, of shonua oil field so we are back. Uh, if you have questions for uh, Eric and, and André Charles, uh, please, please uh, ask them. You are, you are free to do it. We have already two, two of them. So maybe Eric and, and André Charles, you can, uh, can join us and, and, and activate your, your uh, cam, maybe. Hello. Hi. Okay, so I will. Okay. Um, okay, so we have one question from uh, Audrey Taifer. Um, she said, very nice presentation of your low temperature RSC. In Ile de France, uh, geothermal energy efficiency uh, supply district heating mostly. Actually, because there is the population that needs to be uh, heated. However, the dogger uh, extends beyond the urbanized area. And do you imagine, imagine uh, or have a project to produce electricity from the classic dogger doublet in uninhabited zone? Uh, would it be cost effective for usually exploited values, more, uh, more or less 60, 60, 80 degrees Celsius? And uh, she says, 100 or to 300 uh, cubic meter per, per hour. So can you react on that? <laughs> Big question. I think it's for you, André Charles. OK, let's see. Um, supplying district eating, actually, because that's a little bit. I think yes, it could be. Uh, it should be interesting to to do that to uh, install uh, an uh, organic ranking cycle in a geothermal um, context, just only to produce uh, electricity. I mean, it is possible to to produce um, at uh, this temperature and this flow rate. Could be um, could be uh, around. Uh, 20 to 40 kilowatts uh, of um, net elect um, gross electricity. Um, cost effective, I think, yes. Uh, on this, uh, we need to do some work because at this time, it's only a prototype. The cost is quite expensive. And um, regarding this, uh, and uh, if you are producing electricity, without uh, sell it at a, a, a same price of um, solar energy. I think it will be really um, difficult to be, um, to be, um, uh, as I can say, uh, to have a good return of invest because the ORC is really new technology. And for this reason, it's, quite expensive as this time, but a part of the work in the mid project, it's to find a way to, to, to reduce this, uh, this cost. I don't know if I answer to a question. 
Hey, yeah, it's a it's a very um, very good answer. I think to the, that is clear, and uh, so far the 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 stage of the project uh, doesn't allow to be economic right now, and, and uh, deploying it it's a at a, at a bigger scale. Uh, it, it requires to to uh, minimize the the production cost, right? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you very much, Andre Charles. And there are two other questions uh, from from uh, on our, our meet partner, uh, PhD student at uh, TU Darmstadt, Eje Gulturan. Um, so thank you again for this uh, informative site visit. Uh, question one: What is the internal consumption of the pump? Uh, what it uh, what is produced here as uh, 20 kilowatt is enough for the pump or not? Maybe we'll take this one, André Charles, you will, you will, um, you will um, add on to my comments. So I guess it, it depends a little bit what, what we're talking about here. There are, there are two pumps, actually. There's one pump um, down, down the producing well at two kilometers, and there's one pump uh, that is part of the ORC unit. So I'll let André Charles uh, talk about how the growth power relates to the net power once we've uh, taken out the auto consumption of the URC unit. I'll just talk about the, uh, what we call the ESP, uh, that stands for electrical submersible pump. This is, uh, this is a pump that is located down uh, two kilometers down the well. Um, on the, 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 the job of this pump is to lift the fluid up uh, the well. The reason is that, um, like many um, you know, oil fields, the shown oil field is depleted. So there's a low pressure in the reservoir. And the second thing is that uh, uh, water has replaced oil uh, over time. And therefore, we have a, a, a heavier um, fluid column in the well uh, compared to the uh, initial um, state, if you like, of the, when, when we started producing oil. So all, 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 uh, all, all, um, all in all, uh, we need a, a lifting pump to lift the fluid on this pump as a huge, um, as quite a large uh, energy consumption. The power uh, required downhole for the submersible pump is 150 kilowatt. I'm talking power here. So if you compare the 15, the 15 kilowatt of uh, produced electricity at surface growth to the 150, uh, 150 kilowatt, um, uh, uh, kilowatt needed. We're talking about um, about 10% uh, of the uh, energy uh, needed by the submersible pump is is can be provided by the ORC unit. So it, it may sound uh, low. Uh, however, there's two things I, I want to remind. Uh, uh, electricity opex are usually the highest cost when it comes to uh, you know operating and maintenance costs for uh, oil and gas field, especially in the more mature uh, fields, the, the, the older ones, if you like. So even five to 10% is, is quite significant on the, any oil operator is, is, uh, is, uh, is happy to take any cost reduction, even if it is only five or 10%. So, you know, this is not, uh, this is not negligible. And the second thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish here, uh, the, the, second, the second point um, uh, is, is that, uh, you know, it can, it, can be, it can be improved, it will be improved, you know, as, as André Charles said, this is, uh, this is a uh, first pilot, and uh, we have already uh, identified ways to uh, ways to improve it. And I guess final point, and I'll stop here, is that uh, in that case, uh, in that field, we have uh, high energy consumption by this pump, but there are other um, applications or the fields where you know, there's more um, um, eruptive wells that have uh, that would have in that case a better uh, a better uh, um, a better uh, energy uh, uh, ratio, if you like. Over to you for the uh, growth versus net. Yes, about growth versus net. Uh, there are many things to, to say. Um, uh, when I said we produce um, around 20 kilowatts or uh, 16 kilowatts, this is the growth production. Um, it's, that means that this is the production uh, behind the inverter. But uh, we need to make a calculation. It's um, the net production, who is the gross production minus the consumption of the system. Uh, in the standard, uh, we don't use the, we don't count the consumption of a dry cooler. 
uh, because it's a, it's a huge part is we focus only on the organic ranking cycle. Uh, the main conception is the pump, the feed pump. Uh, it, it's around of, um, 9% of uh, the net uh, the gross production. Uh, if we produce uh, 16 kilowatts, the consumption of the pump and the over auxiliaries, I mean, um, the small dry cooler for cooling down the expander and the internal consumption of the inverter, we are around 1.6 kilowatts. This is a fact if you are focusing really on the, on the, on the ORC. But if you take uh, more um, component in account, I mean the dry cooler, and Eric know it uh, well, uh, the dry cooler, it's a big, it's a huge part of the uh, consumption of, our, of the system. Uh, because during summer, you need to cool down the, the, the cold loop. But if... Um, external temperature it's high uh, it will get a real impact of your uh, in your prof performance in, in your production and uh, this is a two element that will decrease your uh, net production that means the high temperature will decrease your performance you will produce less and you will uh, be uh, get the obligation to turn uh, at the full of its capacity, the dry cooler, and it will also increase the consumption. At the end, you will have a, 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 um, a big consumption. Uh, in Chaunois, during this, in, in, in summer, the, um, the consumption, the total consumption, dry cooler plus pump, plus everything was around 40% uh, of uh, net production. But it will go lower in winter. Huh? So it, it, it was a bit of a worst case. Uh, scenario. Yes, it was the worst case to, 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 um, to do it. But if uh, you get the chance to have um, hot source and cold source available on your, on your site, you will not take in account the consumption of a dry cooler and it will be only the consumption of a pump. Uh, it will be around, yes, 9% uh, of your net production. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there is another question that actually the, we need to, to answer, answer that because I, I think I made a mistake. So, um, on the, on the on the video. So, what is the organic fluid uh, used in this cycle here? <laughs> yes, it's a, bar, it, it, it's a really barbarous name, but the the name of the working fluid is the R one two three three Z D. Uh, it's an HFO uh, fluid. It's a, a kind of um, new generation fluid because. Uh, it is um, efficient for organic ranking cycle, but it's also um, environmental friendly. The uh, G uh, GWP the, um, uh, warming gas uh, production, it's around one, uh, it's one, it's the same of uh, CO2 and it's a uh, non-hazardous fluid. It's why we are using it for uh, our uh, ORC. Um, and uh, yeah, is there, I mean, for this fluid, is there any other advantage uh, of using that in, uh, instead of, uh, I mean, in addition to its lower boiling point and uh, higher molecular weights compared to water? Yes, it's why it's, but it's why we are using organic, uh, organic fluids because it's of a low uh, boiling point uh, also for the, um, the um, uh, enthalpy of this fluid that we can uh, exploit. Uh, I think I can be, I can give more detail on uh, the fluid selection uh, on the, um, the session 
yeah. on my session in, on Friday, and uh, I invite to run as a goal to come uh, if she wants to know uh, more about the selection of working fluids in the organic ranking cycle. I'm sure she would. Uh, maybe on, on, the, on the shell, maybe just a quick one. Maybe you could share with us what is the boiling uh, temperature of this fluid at, at the at the operating pressure at six bar. What 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 would it be? I think it's, it's quite interesting for the students to, to get that. Um, I think it's quite complicated to explain okay. explain it because uh, I need to show a, a diagram because the boiling will depend of the pressure that you will get inside your system and also the temperature of uh, uh, of the hot loop. But uh, if I we can start the boiling the boiling phase uh, at the at forty degrees. But depending of a on, of a, of a pressure you get under your system. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, there is the conclusion soon. So I want just to to ask a, a last question to to uh, Eric. Um, as as you were part of this uh, prototyping and uh, and uh, uh, implementation on site, uh, what would be next as as an oil producer? Uh, would it be possible for you in the next next uh, years to come to, uh, uh, let's say, to apply this technology at a, at a bigger scale on, on many different uh, uh, selected uh, wellheads? Uh, and would, would this be uh, an option for, for Vermillon or do you think for un other companies maybe to, to, uh, to follow this kind of, uh, um, this kind of innovation? Okay, so the, the first thing I want to highlight is, is that it's, it's already quite a, quite, a, quite a success, you know, when we started this project, we are not sure whether we would be able to integrate such a unit in our production system, you know, uh, producing oil field is, uh, is quite complex to operate because you have a, a number of hazards on the, you have all sorts of, uh, you know, pressure issues on the on pressure mean, pressure max on, on all sorts of, of, of issues that, so first integrating this, this unit in, in the process is, is a success. Then uh, things did work quite well. You know, we were worried, for instance, about uh, um, uh, about uh, you know um, DPs, uh, delta P across the across the, the heat exchanger. So it worked as as designed. So this is great. Uh, now, in terms of, of electricity, as I said, uh, at this stage, we we uh, we anticipate that it can probably produce um, or contribute to anywhere between five to ten percent of our electrical needs. Then, so let me answer your question. You know, uh, so the, then the, the, the question, the remaining question is, can we do better than this? That's why, you know, now that we have demonstrated that we can, uh, that we can basically operate it within our facilities, we'll move to uh, more optimal conditions in terms of uh, rate and temperature. That's the next pilot next month in Caso in south, southwest of France. So we'll see whether uh, under an optimized uh, system, we, we can deliver even uh, better, uh, more energy. Yeah? And then, then there's uh, the question of the scale up. So uh, how can we scale it up? Uh, well, I guess it's a little early to, to, to say. Um, I, see, I, see a, I see a market for our largest, uh, for our largest uh, wells in you know, the, hot, you know, the, the, the hottest wells on the more prolific wells. I think this, there could be a market on, on the obvious uh, the, the, the other part of the portfolio that has a smaller oil, uh, smaller water production is, is a bit more difficult. But uh, the most prolific ones, are, I think we could we could see some uh, some implementation in the years to come. Okay. Good. Um, I think we're just a little bit late for, but uh, that, that's uh, <laughs> the way it is. Uh, I want to thank you both uh, very much for for. Um, the, the very valuable uh, information you you shared uh, for this uh, taking part of this uh, mid project is uh, I think it's uh, very very interesting for uh, for uh, industrial partners to to see uh, the, the synergies and the contribution for from research and uh, I mean you, you made a very nice um, pilot uh, demonstration so I, I think this is uh, this will be uh, Followed uh, in the near future by by uh, uh, by the next generation of uh, geothermal scientists. So, 
Um, thank you very much, Eric and André Charles. Um, and we, we will uh, finish this session. I hope you, it was not too long uh, and you enjoyed uh, seeing different uh, types of, um, of uh, production sites. Uh, this is the, the one that we planned to visit uh, for real again, and we did it uh, all of them uh, <laughs> in, in, uh, in virtual mode.